is the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. In the Lord shall my soul be praised. Let the meek hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name to Have you ever heard of the Orthodox Church? No, I haven't. Have you ever heard of the Orthodox Church? I've heard of Orthodox the Church, but I don't know what you, you know, want. Like the Orthodox Church, like Greek Orthodox, Russian Greek, Orthodox. Greek, yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you know what it is? I couldn't tell you much about it. Have you ever heard of the Orthodox Church? The Orthodox Church of the Christian Orthodox Church. Um, yeah, I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. No. Really quick, have you ever heard of the Orthodox Church? Yep. Yes? Yeah. What is it? Orthodox is a uh, off branch of the uh, regular Christian community for they don't practice the custom regular uh, customs. The regular customs of the, uh, the Christian community? Yeah. Orthodox, yes. Yes, I have. Yeah? You, I have. What is it? Eastern Orthodox or? Yeah, is that okay. Eastern, Greek, mm -hmm. Oh, that's the question. Um, ah. <laughs> was that the was that the the original? That was on the original calendar. They celebrate the holidays at a slightly different time on the calendar, like a month off. I know uh, Easter is different. Um, people don't know this. Is that why? A lot yeah. Of say no. Oh. oh. Okay. It's a church that follows, I mean, um, religion in a sort of strict conservative way type of thing. Have you ever heard of the Orthodox Church? No. Have you ever heard of the Orthodox Church? I have not actually. Never heard of the Orthodox Church? I'm afraid not. Have you ever heard of the Orthodox Church? Not really. Uh, Greek Orthodox, uh, Catholic, uh, yes, uh, Greek Orthodox, yes. I would. I believe it would be the Greek Orthodox Church for, for the Greeks. They have one on the lakefront, New Orleans. Well, there's a church that man put together and used a lot of pieces of the scriptures, of the tradition, and make the tradition of the church, and make it become the church of their own. And using parts of the Bible as if this, this is what God said. This is how it should be. The Orthodox Church. I've um, I don't I've heard of an Orthodox Church. Not around here. I don't attend church myself. Um, I couldn't tell you personally much about it. Have you ever heard of the Orthodox Church? Yes. Could you explain really quickly what it is? No, I'm not really an authority enough to talk about religion. What is the Orthodox Church? Well, if, um, if we take the word orthodox, it actually comes from the, the Greek word orthos, which means uh, right or correct, or even more precisely, that which is established. So, for instance, we see someone doing something strange or out of the ordinary, we say that that's unorthodox because it's not what has already been established. So when we say Orthodox Christianity or, or the Orthodox Church, what we're saying is the church that is correct and that which is already established. So to put it quite simply, the Orthodox Church is the original Christian church without any addition or subtraction. In other words, you could, if you had a time machine and you took a Christian from the earliest times of Christianity, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th century, and you transported them to 
our time, and you brought them to an Orthodox church, they would find it very familiar. I mean, obviously the language would be different, but in other words, um, most of the customs, the worship, they would all be very used to, and more importantly, the beliefs, the dogmas, would all be exactly the same. So Orthodox Christianity, the Orthodox Church, is the original Christianity preserved from the earliest times. If I could comment on that, how old is the Orthodox Church? Well, um, you could certainly uh, debate it, but uh, most people say that the birth of the church was really the day of Pentecost, which was about 33 years um, after the, the birth of Christ, so A.D. 33. So um, it's uh, a couple thousand years old now. That's, that's you know, thereabouts uh, is the age of the church. So it's about two, you're saying it's about 2,000 years old? Yes. If, if I can comment on, on something you just said, uh, you said orthodox is incorrect. Does that imply that other churches are incorrect? Or if, if I may ask, what is the difference between the orthodox church and the Protestant churches or the Roman Catholic church? What, what are some of the differences? Well, <clears throat> yes, orthodoxy is adhering to the original Christianity. Um, for the first thousand years of Christianity, there really was only one church. I mean, you couldn't go back to the third century and find the first Baptist church of Jerusalem. Um, there was just the Christian church. Uh, however, it was very much so associated with the uh, trials and tribulations of the Roman Empire. Um, and so, as the political climate and the the fate of the Roman Empire changed. So did, um, you know, sort of the the uh, the unfolding of the history of Christianity unfold. So by the time uh, you have we get to about a thousand A A D. There's a there's a big rift between the eastern and western halves of the Roman Empire. And this rift is not only. Uh, politically, but in many ways, um, in, in the in the religious uh, character of the uh, the Roman citizens. So, in 1054, you have uh, what we call the Great Schism, or the Great Split, and it's where the Bishop of Rome um, excommunicated all of the Eastern bishops uh, at once. He sends his, uh, one of his um, legates to Constantinople and, and excommunicates the West. In turn, the patriarch at the time of Constantinople excommunicated those who had excommunicated him. So this was really the split. Um, it wasn't a, a sudden thing. It, it had been brewing for a couple of centuries. But one of the foremost things that had driven the split was uh, the addition of the Catholic Church, uh, and I say that meaning the Roman Catholic Church, the western half of the, of the church, their insertion of what we call the filioque into the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed. Um, there's a certain part during that creed where in the original text it says that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father who with the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified. That is the original text. The West had added the uh, additional phrase, filioque, which in Latin means and the Son, um, to that creed. So they, when they say it, even today, they say the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son. And this was wholly unacceptable in the East, um, mainly because it was an innovation. It was an addition to the faith. It was not... Uh, universally accepted. It, it was not the result of an ecumenical council, uh, and so it, it was uh, rejected in the in the East. And then, in the addition to that, uh, by that point, you'd had um, the Frankish uh, takeover of the western half of the Roman Empire. And uh, in the uh, in the uh, ninth century, you begin to see the the building uh, blocks where 
the the Pope of Rome began to um, exercise greater power, especially with the fall of the Western Emperor that create, created a power vacuum, and so the Bishop of Rome kind of stepped into that power vacuum and began to tout himself as um, as the universal head of the church. Well, this was obviously um, not acceptable to the East because the Eastern Church, the what we now call the Orthodox Church, or at the time the Greek-speaking Church, or what we call the Greek Orthodox Church, um, <clears throat> they rejected that uh, on the basis of saying, well, no, the Bishop of Rome is an important bishop, but he's not the universal head of the church. He is one bishop among many bishops, and we've always decided things together, collegially, uh, or, or in a council fashion. So that was one of the major disruptions between the East and the West. I do have a question before we continue. Um, you're saying the word bishop. Um, what is a bishop? Um, uh, I know Roman Catholicism has clergy, they have bishops. Pre mm -hmm. what, what exactly is a bishop and why is that important? Why, is, why does this matter? Okay. Uh, well, the bishop actually comes, I mean, that it, it, it started very early on. Um, you can even see it in the, in the New Testament. Um, when the apostles would essentially evangelize a group of people, you know, basically plant a church, uh, they would always leave behind um, an elder. Um, in the Greek, you'll see the word presbyter, uh, which, is, which literally means just elder. Uh, they would have usually a group of elders, so sort of a group of leadership to be able to guide you know, this new Christian community that they would plant. And there would be a president of these elders who was the overseer. Now, overseer at that time, um, if you had, for instance, if you had a group of servants, of slaves, essentially, doulos is what they would call it in Greek, you would have one who was the overseer. And the word for overseer in Greek is epi, skopos, over, epi, skopos, to see, oversee. And so we get the word episkopos or episkopos uh, from that. And, uh, and you see that in the New Testament. Uh, several times, uh, St. Paul is writing to Timothy or Titus, who were overseers, episcopus, or bishop is the way we would translate it into English today. So, essentially, the, the bishop is um, the successor to the apostle, or the, the successor to the apostles, and is, becomes the shepherd for a flock. So, so they're the successors to the apostles. How do you end up with bishops in the 9th and 10th centuries then? How does that work? Well, it had, it had been that way the whole time. In other words, um, after a, a, you know, bishops would ordain new bishops as their successors. So we call that an apostolic succession. In other words, the apostles laid hands on certain men and made them overseers or bishops. And then those men, in turn, laid hands on other men to make them bishops. And then this continued on and, con and has uh, led to today an unbroken chain of men laying hands or ordaining uh, other men to be bishops so that they can oversee the flock of Christ. An unbroken succession. Correct. So I guess one of the big, what you're saying is one of the big differences between Roman Catholicism and Orthodoxy is that the... They don't believe that the Bishop of Rome has this uh, power, this sort of, um, that, that he is the head of the church. Yes. Um, the Bishop of Rome, Rome was obviously a very important uh, see. A see is what we call, you know, the, um, the area that a bishop oversees. It's called his, his see. Um, the see of Rome was always a very important place because it was, at the time, the capital of the empire. And the Bishop of Rome actually carried the title, the first among equals. So say, for instance, we were going to have a banquet and someone was going to sit at the head of the table, he would sit at the head of the table because he was the first among the equals. He held that place of honor. And over time, um, they, they began to 
sort of assert that this primacy of honor was really a primacy of administration. And so today, in all essence, um, the Roman Catholic Church is really one diocese. The whole world is one diocese, and it really has only one bishop, and that's the Bishop of Rome. And all of the other bishops that are underneath him are really just vicar bishops. They're just, they're, you know, because in... What does that mean, vicar? A vicar bishop is someone who is ruling uh, a subdivision of someone else's see. In other words, they're kind of, um, you know, your, your right-hand man. They're, they're, um, they don't have the full authority. They, they sort of act in place of, uh, of, of the bishop. It sounds like this, the, this Catholic Orthodox um, division would require its own, its own video. Its own, its oh, absolutely. I'm sure we, seems, I'm sure we it, will, it, yes. It seems, it seems there's quite a lot there. Um, if you don't mind if I, if I proceed. So um, to summarize, um, one of the key differences between Roman Catholicism and Orthodoxy is this, this fili- filioque, right? yes. This, this, this addition to this creed. Correct. Um, as the, as the viewers have seen what the creed uh, uh, is at, at this point, um, it's the addition of those words. Um, but also uh, this division that the, uh, the Orthodox Church does not see its bishops or any individual bishop as the head of the entire church. Correct. The, but Rome does. Rome, the Romans do. Yes. Uh, and you can actually see the beginnings of how the Orthodox Church acts in the 15th chapter of the book of Acts. Uh, there was a question uh, that the apostles had to tackle very early on as to what to do with Gentiles who wanted to become Christians. And there was a camp of thought that said, well, they have to become uh, Jews and uh, you know, follow the Jewish laws and, and, and so on. And then there was another camp that said, no, we're kind of past that. They can go directly into Christianity. And if you read in the 15th chapter of Acts, they decided... Uh, what to do in a council uh, in Jerusalem. It was the first apostolic council in Jerusalem. And it was not Peter, who the Roman Catholics claim is the first bishop of Rome, who presided. It was actually the brother, uh, the stepbrother of our Lord Jesus Christ, James, who was the bishop of Jerusalem. He is the one who presided. And everyone got a chance to say their piece. And then the bishops, all of the bishops, all of the apostles, in, in essence, decided the outcome together, and then James pronounced the, the judgment of the whole council. So that's the way that the Orthodox Church is, um, is, is guided even to today. So there's an equality amongst the, the overseers, the bishops? Correct. The elders, okay. Yes. 